Hey there, my name is Rocco. If this is the first time on my channel, then welcome. And if you've been around before, then welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to continue our look at the type of lights that we have available to us in DAS 3D. Uh, in my previous video on this subject, we actually looked at distant lights, how to use them, the options we can play with, and we had a brief chat of when and how to use them in your scene. Uh, if you've not watched that video yet, then you'll see a link up in the top right corner if you want to check it out. But today, we're going to be taking a look at spotlights and giving them a once over like we did with a uh, with distant lights now as you can see we have a model loaded into our scene this time it's albany from muso and as is usually the case we've stuck some hair on ahead and got her all suited and booted ready for the video and as usual as also you can find the links to her and the other assets in this scene down in the description below now before we get started uh, i'd like to thank everybody who has subscribed to me over the last couple of months it's been amazing the response that i've, that I've had uh, so if if as yet you've not subscribed uh, then i'd appreciate if you could help out the channel a little bit by hitting the subscribe button and the little notification bell down below so that you don't miss any future videos whether in this lighting series or any of the other das 3 topics that i do videos on but thanks for everybody who has subscribed so far and let's get on with today's topic so okay then, the first thing that we want to do is to come across to our render settings and just make sure we're on our environment tab that we're on scene only. Uh, you can use spotlights in any uh, of these environment modes, but I'm just going to put it on scene only just so we know there's no other lights interfering with things. Uh, and at the moment, therefore, there's no lights in the scene. So if we come across to NVIDIA iRay, we'll just end up with a completely black silhouetted character, as you can see there, because there's no lights in the scene. So if we go back to texture mode, uh, and then what we want to try and do now then is put a spotlight into the scene. For anybody who's just new to Daz, the way we do that is we come up to create, down to new spotlight, and do something like that. Now, we get two options here, apply default settings. What that will do is put the spotlight at 000 XYZ coordinates in the scene, basically where our model is gonna be standing. We don't that want that one. What we want instead is apply active viewport transforms camera. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna place the spotlight at the XYZ position of our camera. So we're gonna be exactly where the camera is, that's where the spotlight's gonna go. So when that's clicked and we click accept, we get a little circle appear on the screen. You saw some change there. Uh, this bit of the shading's changed. What that is, is because on window, we've got preview light set. I'm gonna turn that off because I don't really use it myself. And as you said, she'll just go back to a flat model. Uh, if we come to perspective view and just have a spin around for a moment, we can see the spotlight placed exactly where our camera is, as we said on that little dialog box. So if again, we come back through to camera, and we have a look at our model and again we swap over to NVIDIA iRay preview we can now see our characters being lit up with a very dim spotlight or a very dim light uh, now if we well make sure we've got spotlight uh, selected as we've got up there in the scene tab if we then come down to the lights tab way down at the bottom here uh, we can see all the, the options that are available that we can change to affect the light itself. For the moment, I'm only going to come down to luminous flux, which, you know, determines the brightness of, uh, the light. And I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase that brightness. First of all, I'm just going to put a, a zero on, on it to, to make it up to 15,000 lumen. The higher the number, the brighter the light. Uh, as you can see, she's lit up a bit more, but it's probably not enough. Uh, what I'll do, I'll just double that. I'll make it 30,000. And there we have our character lit up by the spotlight that we have positioned at our camera point. So what we'll do now is have a little quick look at the, the basic options, the other basic, basic options that we've got here. So for instance, we've got color. We can easily just change the color of our spotlight. Uh, you know, we can give it a little bit of a green tint if we want, or if we weren't happy with that colour, we could go with a much darker red. Uh, you're probably going to get the best results from, again, the lower or the paler type of colours on the spectrum, uh, just to give the things more of a tint, because they are obviously really strong when you go full, full-blown, hard, solid colours like that. Of course, it depends totally on the scene that uh, you're trying to create. Uh, if we just take that back to... To white or hopefully we'll get it back to white eventually uh, 
when it comes to intensity, intensity will just increase or decrease the intensity of the current light that we've got. Uh, it's a little bit different to uh, the, the, the luminous flux or the lumens, but you know, if we go higher, it'll just you know make it a little bit more intense. And likewise, if we go lower, right the way down, obviously it'll turn it black, but it just changes the intensity. Uh, you're probably best just ignoring that and just using the luminous flux to go up and down. Photometric Port metric mode, I would just ignore that. That's nothing really. Now, spread angle defines just how widespread the light from the cone is, uh, from the spotlight is. If we could just to pop into perspective view for a moment, <clears throat> you can see that uh, the spotlight is given off this cone of light and spread angle determines the outer regions of that light. So if we were to go back into a camera, but this time into spotlight, so that we're looking through the spotlight as though it was a camera. We can see the outer edge of the cone there and then this inner area. The inner area is going to receive the most light <clears throat> and that's where your brightest light's going to be. Whereas the outer area is going to see the light get dispersed as it travels further away from the centre. And you can see that down on our model's legs as they start to get darker from about our knee down. Now, if we were to lower the spread angle, so we were to narrow the beam, now what will happen here, the spotlight will actually zoom in. But as we zoom in, you can see the area of light in the centre begins to intensify, whereas the the, the, the fall off, the, the outer uh, area of the cone, has become a lot, you know, a lot smaller compared to the inner circle. And so the drop off, which now is happening around the waist area, happens to start to happen a lot sooner. And likewise, you can see that more if we go to 15. Uh, we bring in coming really far. There's now a lot of intense light going into the centre circle and the drop-off area, the outer part of the cone, is now much more closer to the centre of the circle. Now, if we go back the other way, let's say we just now go up to 90, uh, we can see that the, the outer circle, the outer cone, starts to widen a bit further and therefore that means that there's more light being dispersed from the uh, spotlight and therefore our centre area becomes dimmer. Now, if we put spread angle back down to its default of 60, oops, back down to its default of 60, uh, and we move on to beam exponent. Beam exponent does a similar thing to spread angle, but it, what it doesn't do is it doesn't widen this outer area. It doesn't disperse the light over a wider area. So if we were to take beam exponent and just take it up to, say, 16, you'll see the center part of the circle brighten again, but the outer cone part of the cone hasn't moved hasn't changed so the light isn't dis being dispersed over a wider area we're just focusing the light more on that center circle so if we keep on going up let's go up to 32 you'll see it get brighter still and the fall off obviously does actually occur and then if we go up to 64 uh, as you can see there it gets more and more intense in the center and the fall off happens much quickly and so now if we come across and put the beam exponent back down to four the default setting uh, and we now move on to the light geometry well in fact before I do that I'll just come out of uh, IRA preview a moment and come to a top view and look down on our scene with our spotlight selected what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the spotlight so it comes in more at a side on angle to our model and just rotate it around so it's pointing at her. So now if we come and look back through our camera instead and go into our NVIDIA iRay, what you see uh, is you see the light coming in from her right and we'll have a look at the stomach you can see these this brightly lit area on the stomach when then it hits this hard line this hard you know, shadow that you get and you see it up on her face and you can certainly see it here as it's coming through the, the blouse that she's wearing and casting these really dark shadows on her body and there between her legs also. Uh, what the reason for that is, is if we come across to the perspective view and we have a look at the camera and just come around and have a look at the camera. If you follow all these lines, uh, these parallel lines that converge into this single point, what's happening there is all the light is coming from that point where they all come together, just at this point, just there. Uh, if we now go back and, and look at our options, we can see that the light geometry itself is classified as a point. So all the light is going to come from that point, And that's why we get these really harsh, dark shadows with a spotlight.
Now, if we come across and we just have a look at this drop down menu that's under light geometry, we can see we've got options for point, rectangle, disc, sphere, and cylinder. Now, they all more or less work the same. They just give a different area from where the light's coming from. Uh, if we choose rectangle instead, and just give that a slight little click, you can see a little black thing has appeared just up there in our spotlight. Uh, and that's the reason for that is that because our spot point light within the spotlight has been changed by a rectangle and it's now using these dimensions of height and width now in this case i think it's centimeters that it's doing so it's created a 10 by 10 centimeter area of light where this light from the spotlight is going to emanate from if we were to make it bigger let's say 100 by 100 you can now see the rectangle appear uh, behind the spotlight all of our lights the 30,000 lumens that we've got in our light is now going to come from all areas of this spotlight. It's going to be dispersed over that that 100 by 100 rectangle. So what that will result in, if we come back to our camera, is not only a dimmer light, because the light is more dispersed, but if you look now at our shadows, they've all became very soft. You know, if we, if we just go back to, to point for a moment, just so you can see, we get really really harsh shadows but if we then go back to rectangle and in this case i've made it 100 by 100 you can see how all them shadows have softened now one thing that you might want to do is you might want to increase the number of lumens just to to try and get back to your original brightness uh, if i just go up to 50,000, it brightens up again but again if you notice it keeps all the shadows nice and soft if you're going to use point you're going to result in harsh shadows. If you use something on the light geometry like a rectangle or any of the others work similar the same, you just get a different shape light. Uh, you will end up being able to soften the shadow if you start then to make this height and width, you know, a significant number. Uh, sometimes you might make it so big that uh, if you want to, that is, it might make it so big that it might interfere with a few of your cameras or from certain angles you might not like. Uh, but what you can then do is you can come down to render emitter, which is default on. And if you click that onto off, you'll see now that that doesn't appear now in your rendered scene. So it'll be hidden from view. Uh, and ultimately that's about it when it comes down to uh, spotlights uh, the best you know how to use them etc how to put them into your scene light portal on the options i would ignore it doesn't really do anything it's an old depreciated thing now within daz two-sided would have your light uh you know project light from both sides so if you go back to and have a look and think about that rectangle it would not only put light out into the scene towards our model but it would also send light out into the behind it into the, the the back end of the scene i wouldn't really use that for spotlights you know i would use that more for point lights etc etc uh, and that's it really that's spotlights for you uh how to use them and, and when best to use them well that's another video in and of itself really and how to get the best out of them uh but just to summarize i wouldn't use them really as a the primary form or the primary source of your light within a scene unless you're doing some sort of studio shoot you know i mean this for instance could be turned into a studio shoot but if you're doing a, a scene where you know you're our model say sitting on the, the the couch watching tv i would try and avoid spotlights because they are very artificial in the nature you can use them to highlight a few little areas for instance you could use a spotlight to bring out uh you know a little highlight in our model's eyes or you know just to try to you know increase the highlight that you get on the the specularity on the skin you could use them like that but unless you're doing uh a pure shot as if you did in a in a photo studio i would try to to minimize your use of spotlights but for the studio shots are absolutely brilliant certainly when you turn them into rectangles and spheres etc etc uh so that's it that is uh, spotlights and, and the main options that you've got to be able to use them. Uh, if you've liked this video, then please give it a thumbs up and share it about for me as it really helps out uh, the channel. Uh, if you haven't already, as I've already mentioned, uh, please subscribe and then you'll carry on you know, getting little notifications when this video and future videos drop. And if you have any comments, whether it's about this video, about spotlights, about Daz 3D in general, or you just want to have a little chat, drop a little comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Uh, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye now. <laughs>